favor to all of the saints and friends. I appreciate the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's wonderful to see everybody here in the house on this morning. And I do thank and uh, honor this opportunity to stand before you with the first word. So if you'd be so kind, if you would uh, turn to the Gospel of John. First chapter of John. first verse, and it is our custom if you please stand for the reading of the word. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you need to wait, say wait. Slow them like chimes. Come on, Leonard. Amen, amen. So this is recorded in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Second reading, verse 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. May the Lord add a blessing to the doers and hearers of the Word. You may be seated. Father oh God, in the name of Jesus, I humble myself before you, asking that you come in today, Lord, take charge of this period of time as we look into your Word, Father God. Bless us with a impartation of understanding that we leave here better than we can. So I ask in Jesus' name, amen. amen. So I'd like to just leave this thought with you as we discuss God is. God is. I know when you hear that, you're thinking, okay, is there something missing? Is that a complete sentence? Some of us would uh, lean on our punctuation and say, uh, do I need to have an exclamation point there? How forceful are you trying to be? Is this a, a question mark situation? Is, is there an ellipsis there? What is that? God is. Others of the household of faith would tell you uh, from their experience that God is a, a doctor in a sick room. He is a lawyer in a courtroom. Uh, he's been described as a way maker, a mind regulator, and a heart fixer. But in, our, in reality, our God is all of that and so much more. However, to be an unbeliever, what you going? this topic speaks to the root of unbelief. Like Thomas, many find it hard to believe in an, in an intangible God whose physical presence must be quantified or measured to gain attention. Unlike Thomas, we will not have the opportunity to see the nail marks or touch our Lord's pierced side. If there's anyone under the sound of my voice that finds it hard to let go of their need to satisfy their natural senses, I can offer one tangible piece of evidence. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, please allow me to ask for your assistance for the next few minutes. If you have a smartphone, please stand up. Doesn't matter whether it's Android or if you're an apostolic. If you have a smartphone, please stand up. All right, now, if you can remember 10 numbers, you can remember 10 telephone numbers inside your phone, please sit down. So everybody sat down. If you remember 10 telephone numbers that are in their phone. Well, praise the Lord. For those of you who are still standing, you serve as the example of why they call it a smartphone. Because it is taking all of the knowledge out of your head to allow to make room for things of less importance. Everybody can please be seated. If you don't have the Emmanuel Temple app in your smartphone, I would encourage you, before you leave the sanctuary today, please go to your store, download the ET app for your phone. You will be kept up on the latest news, 
and happy things. You'll have an opportunity to see our church calendar. You know what's going on here at Emmanuel Temple. But most importantly, on that app, you will find a link to God's Word, the Bible. It's important to have that Bible on hand every moment of the day because you never know when you're going to need it. There's, I imagine there's only a few people in the world who may get photographic memory that can commit the whole Bible to memory and be able to regurgitate it at will or at need. But if you have the scriptures handy, whether in paper format, and now everybody goes electronic, but do have that. Get that. The main reason I say that is because if it's in your phone, again, you'll have access. Not too many of us with a cell phone are going to leave home, go to work or school without that phone. Can I get an amen? amen. And if you do leave home, I can be a fortune teller and see a U-turn in your immediate future. <laughs> so you should always be armed with your sword. To me, that scripture, uh, okay, having the Bible at your fingertips uh, is where I build my argument for the tangible nature of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. To me, the scripture sounds pretty cut and dry. But many still have doubt. I find it quite interesting that prior to this leap in technology, people would write down letters to communicate feelings, desires, emotions, and instructions. Those letters would sometimes be addressed to men or women the writer had never even met. Back in the day, uh, we called those pen pals. There are also thousands of ministries who write letters of encouragement to inmates in state and federal facilities. A lot of times, they don't even know the inmates, but they're still able to communicate by the word. Global missions touches the lives of families who are less fortunate living in third world environments, and in return, they'll receive a thank you letter from somebody that they blessed, but they have not ever met. That all sounds fairly uh, routine and tangible. So why the double standard concerning the Word of God? You know, it's interesting about our phones. The government has access to access your phone wherever you're at. They can look to see where you're at through your phone. If you can set that phone down, they can turn that camera on and see what's going on in your world. You know what? We serve a God that's omnipresent. He doesn't need technology to see what we're doing. He sees us every minute of the day. And we, once again, will put faith in that tangible item that I can put in my hand. But still, doubt. So again, having that word at hand is very important. Those 66 books that make up the Old and New Testament have been reprinted billions of times and is a unique experience to each individual reader, just as God intended it to be. Two people can read the same scripture and get two different thoughts or meanings or instructions because the scriptures speak to the needs of the reader individually through the Holy Ghost. So let's review. You have a life situation and turn to the Bible for guidance, instruction, or comfort. You're reading and meditate on the Word. Relief in the form of understanding comes to you by the Holy Spirit. Sounds like communication and process to me. So what does the Bible say about God? Psalms 46 and 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. John 4 and 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. 1 John 4 and 8, he that loveth not knoweth he that loveth not knoweth not God. So he that loveth not knoweth not God. For God is love. And the last scripture I'm going to leave with you today comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verses 11 through 13. And it's recorded. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called...
the Word of God. My brothers and sisters, if any of you have doubts about your faith, have possibly backslidden, or at a crossroad in your life, when the altar call is given, ask God for the strength to move. Don't sit there. Take it from this nobody. Try to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. Because based on that last scripture, the one thing I trust and believe, God is. And he is coming soon. Amen? Amen.